So I'm getting in my car. I'm getting ready to head home from work. And um, I was getting, I was at the point where I was going to move up to the Hoovering. The first, I'd already actually talked about the first Hoovering. And uh, I was planning on talking about the next time that I was Hoovered, but I have to tell this as it kind of, it kind of uh, like carries the story on through. Um, at some time, sorry, I'm in traffic. <laughs> at some time, um, during the time frame between the time that I was first hoovered by this person, at either, at either rate, I didn't respond and I didn't play into their game that they were trying to play. But the second time before that, now I want to go back and I want to tell this. As I've stated in previous videos, you had to, I had to drive past this man's home every day to and from work, to and from the grocery store in our little town, even to go check my mail. Anywhere that I went, I had to drive past his home unless I went the alternate route, which would have taken me another 20 minutes or so. And it just, you know, it's not worth it to give up your time as, you know, when you're working and you're trying to, you know, live a life to have to go the long way around just to avoid their home. But at some time, I begin to notice, um, his home began to look like someone was moving out of it. I, I heard rumors that he'd lost his job. And, but anyway, the only reason I'm telling that part of the story is because it, it kind of leads to the next phase of him hoovering me and some of the things that he told me. So, you know, I always felt this little pang of guilt when I started finding out that uh, he lost this nice truck, and he lost this nice home, and he lost all, you know, and the, uh, you know, the part of me that still had this, I don't know, what this spell cast upon me, I guess, felt some sorry, some type of sorry for him, and wondering what had happened, and hoping that nothing really terrible, it was, you know, his health or, or whatever hadn't uh, caused this, and, but, um, I'm sorry I had to stop and let some traffic by me, but uh, I don't know why I felt guilt about it or anything like that, but um, as the weeks went by after I noticed that he had moved and his house was sitting empty and this girl later had purchased the home and had moved into it, I started getting hoovered again. A Facebook uh, wave, I think it was a wave or a thumbs up, and I thought, wow, to reach out to me, he's probably drunk or he wouldn't have done this, and then a part of me thought, well, it may not even be his signal or some type of vibe, uh, even when they're not even around you, it's like they can pick up on something. They either want to come along and destroy your happy state of mind, or they want to come along to, and, and uh, move in on you in, in your low state of mind when they think that you're uh, weak and that they can play their game with you again. And so I just, um, I didn't respond. I didn't respond the first time. I didn't respond the second time. Now, about a month goes by. And the job that I was working at, I had, uh, my hours had been cut. I wasn't getting to work as much. But, you know, things were still going pretty good in my life. I was spending more time at home and, and just being more calm and peaceful in my life. I was back to walking. I was doing well, and my health was improving. And, uh, you know, uh, it had been a pretty good summer. And uh, all of a sudden, here he is again, sending me a message. Another wave, another thumbs up, or some emoji, something. Just, a, just a, a filler. Just a, you know, sending a pigeon out to see if they come back with anything. And so, um, I, I did. I took the bait this time, and I, you know, answered the text with the 
a question mark like what the you know what 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 I, I didn't want to let it go this time because I just wanted to see what is this guy want what why now what what's what's the problem in his life that he feels the need to reach out at this time and so I did respond and I did send this uh, I think it was a question mark and over the next couple of days he he texts me back and he's like how have you been and what's been going on and and I knew he didn't give a shit how I had been I knew he didn't give a shit about what had been going on I knew the only thing he wanted was either sex or attention someone who could pay attention to him and as it turned out he wanted both because he was in a low state in his life and even though he had a good job he still had a lot of other bills and i believe that's probably one of the main reasons why he regretted you know discarding this woman so quickly because he couldn't keep up the lifestyle that he was trying to keep up when she was gone and she probably did tell him you know I'm going to take the home and I'm going to make you pay child support. I mean, any woman would, uh, if that was even the case, you know, I don't, I don't have any idea. I'm just speculating. I'm just wondering, but, um, uh, I will get into the, the more about this Hoover, uh, and my he used all that stuff to try to gain my, um, sympathy because, of course, you know, a narcissist is all about themselves. And I guess he wasn't working. He was sitting at home bored. He didn't have any friends. So he starts reaching out to some supply that would give him the two things that mean the most to him in the world. And one was sex. And the second was, uh, you know, boosting his ego and giving him the attention and allowing him to be a game player once again and to get back in this narcissistic abuse cycle. And um, I, I will talk more about that in the, my next video. I just want to say to anybody, if they reach out to you, it doesn't matter if they've recently suffered a loss or if they're at an all-time high. They don't care about you. And when they reach out to you, please just block them and avoid the pain and misery of going through 